Hey guys, we are back on the road again. Dan is driving, yeah. and <laughs> you like driving? Uh, I get nauseous. I can't do anything if I'm not driving. So you get nauseous by not driving? No, like if I like, I would just have to sit there and not do anything. So oh. I can't like play on my phone or do anything because that would make me nauseous. Oh. So. so she drives while I like. Work. Howdy. What's wrong, baby girl? You need to go to sleep. The other two kids are asleep. So while Dan is driving, I was uh, catching up on uh, YouTube comments here uh, that you guys have left on our past couple of vlogs and a couple of other questions, but I'm out of service right now. It says, searching for service. I'm just going to have to go based off of what I remember. And it was from Lulu. Based on what I remember, she's saying like her kids actually don't, uh, like her little daughter, she's like, does the exact opposite of whatever she tells her to do. So if, you know, you, Lulu, or, you know, she says like, hey, don't climb up the stairs, then she'll climb up the stairs. But if she tells her, hey, climb up the stairs, like the reverse psychology thing, like the, like her daughter really loves to disobey. And so she's asking what advice should we have for her that, wow, I, my ears are popping like crazy. It's, we're going through the mountains and all these turvy, curvy roads, which is very, very scenic and an enjoyable ride, but, Man, it makes my ears go crazy. We are not experts by this by any means. Like our kids do not obey all the time. For you know, um, that's not that doesn't happen in our family either. But a couple things that have I think are necessary that have helped with us is um, one is that the kids need to understand that like obeying is not an option. Like it has to happen. Not as like a blind like my dad's a tyrant and I have to do whatever he says or my mom's just like you know, slave driver, you know, the goal behind um, obedience isn't like getting the task done as much as it is training your kids to trust you. And if they trust you, then even if they don't understand why you're telling them to do something, then they're more likely to obey because they're, they, that relationship is based on trust. So when they're really little, like one, two years old, like Hallie's age, and they're just still like, like you gotta have like really low expectations for that. So if we tell, if I tell Hallie like, hey, uh, to climb up the stairs, and she doesn't do it, and I, if I know it, that she knows what I'm asking, and she comprehends it, and so she deliberately like, I know she's deliberately disobeying. I'll ask her again, you know, give her a couple shots, and then if she still doesn't do it, then I'll actually like physically take her hands and help her obey, you know, like here's how you climb up the stairs, you know, and then after I get her started, then she kind of like, okay, okay, then she, then, then she'll climb. Uh, when they get like a little older, at, like Zeke, uh, Zeke's age, um, like he knows what I'm asking him to do, but I also give him a couple chances, just extending a little grace, letting him process and like make the choice to obey. And then probably, and it would maybe like for me anyway, around Hannah's age now, Dan and I are start saying like, actually, Hannah, you're a big girl now. You're four years old, and you totally are at a place where you can obey the very first time that we ask you. We have done reverse psychology on the kids a few times, but it always makes me question like, all right, this is kind of encouraging them to disobey us, which is not the goal. Um, but sometimes they do it like lightheartedly, trying to like play with them and get them to do something. Um, but it depends on it depends on their heart and if it's like a blatant like, why are they disobeying right now? And at a young age, they're testing the waters. They're seeing if you will follow through. They're, they're seeing what they can get away with. And it's just natural for them to try to figure stuff out. They're figuring out their whole entire world right now. And that's just part of what they're figuring out. With Hannah, when she was Zeke's age, I started talking to her a little bit about the obedience and first time and giving a little bit more of a leeway. Like if they are, like for instance, she loves to color. So she's in the middle of coloring a picture and I ask her to do something, she's not gonna wanna do it right then. So kind of giving them the opportunity to ask politely, hey mom, before I do that, can I please finish what I'm doing right now? And then if it's appropriate, then give them that extra time. The reason why we practice first time obedience, I have two reasons of why I like it. Um, one is for my own sake, because if I continue to give um, them opportunities, they're not gonna obey until you're like, this is your final straw until you have a big consequence for this. And for me, I get worked up because I feel like it's almost a personal thing that they're choosing to disobey me and I'm giving them the opportunity to disobey several times before they have to. 
Um, the second one is safety. Because if we are out in public and we come across something that is not safe for them, I need them to obey right away. And that's just practicing it at home and teaching them that this is for your best that we are doing this. This isn't just so we can boss you around. So the goal of obedience, if you keep in mind that it's like not necessarily just to get them to obey, but it's a test for them to pass. One, uh, do they trust you? Do they believe that you are good? You know, do they believe that you are a good father or a good mother and that they know that you can be trusted? So each time we are treating them in obedience, like for us, it's a test of those things. And that's why often it's a very appropriate to give them grace and issue and give them mercy, you know, because uh, even though they don't really deserve it, the goal isn't necessarily to establish yourself as like the dictator in the relationship. The goal is to is to capture their hearts and to earn their trust. And it's important when you are establishing trust with your children that you ask them for forgiveness if you mess up with doing something. So that way they also see that uh, example that you are giving them, but also showing like, okay, mommy did realize that she was not supposed to do that, and now she asked for my forgiveness. Another thing that maybe will help is that I think it's important that the kids see this modeled for them. If I ask Dana to do something, we'll uh, interact hopefully the same way with the kids too. Like, yes, Tim, I can do that. If you can give me a second, I need to finish doing these dishes. I'll say, yeah, no problem, you know? Or if Dana needs me to help her with something, you know, like that type of, like, that, it's not just like blind, strict obedience, but like, hey, let's talk about this. If there's room for that to happen, if not, like, we're gonna model that for each other. And the flip side is, is also modeling, where like, if, if um, I've done something to offend Dana or me, like, when I go to her and apologize, I think it's good for our kids to see that, like, what this looks like, um, that I, Dan and I respect each other, we love each other, we obey each other out of, you know, our relationship of love and trust. It's not just like getting the kids to obey, I think it's kind of like a part of your family dynamic that it's important to incorporate on um, all levels. I'd love to hear from all you other parents below. Dan and I are definitely not experts and we are learning all the time and our kids are very young, you know, uh, one, three and four years old so we have very little experience with the, with all this but i know a lot of you guys your parents out there a lot of other really good helpful advice so comment that below and also if you are a teenager or a, or a kid yourself uh i would love to hear from you guys about how how do you feel how do you receive discipline or how, what are you thinking when your parents are asking you to obey and you just and you choose to disobey i'd love to hear from you guys down there as well budget of money this month to eat out while we are driving and Hattie loves this right here she will just drink and drink and drink I think she feels like such a big girl when she's drinking from a straw <laughs> do you like that girl Is that yummy are you done yet you're still going Please? What are you saying? Please? Please, please, please. What are you... Oh, we got some bread. Is that what she wants? Okay, you're asking so nicely. Let me get you some here. Is it yummy? Oh, you're so beautiful, Hallie. I like your smiles. Are you trying to melt my heart? Is that what you're doing? Are you? Are you trying to melt me? Oh, you want some more drink? Okay. You haven't even taken a bite of your bread yet. You want more drink? But you love drinking from straws, huh? That's fun, huh? You have a special plate. What shape is that? A rectangle. A rectangle. Good job. That's pretty cool, huh? Most of the plates we eat off of are circle or round, like mommy's boring old plate. But, <laughs> but Hannah, you have a nice plate. What, what shape is yours, plate, Zeke? A circle. A circle. And mine is rectangle also. Oh, you want another french fry? Here you go. Yeah, she loves french fries. She loves pretty much anything we put in front of her right now. We're home and look what we found! Mold! <laughs> Are they dying? Oh, that's kind of fuzzy stuff. Yeah, what is that one's growing though? I don't it's even know fuzzy what it too. Is. What <laughs> is that like one? Sunflower seed. Can you see inside the domes? With it's the... a sunflower seed. Can that's you a can... sunflower? Oh, it looks like it. It looks like the sunflower seed. No, it's oh. a tree! No, it's a tree! Oh, it is well, supposed to be a tree. The, one. That's the container. But... <laughs> They all, you guys remember that vlog, everything got so mixed up and turned around and blown over. We have no idea what seeds made it into which pots. There's something oh, trying to come through. Too. <gasps> you should probably water these. Is that cool? Oh, yes. That is so amazing. Our plants are starting to grow. <laughs> it's like we have two successful ones so far. Two? And some really nasty ones. That looks gross. Are yeah. you guys, is, is that normal? Guys, what? Like, 
I kind of want to say that that's like this okay. Is so but I I'd rather really not be don't. growing in our house. Yeah, I don't really know. <laughs> like, is that mold or is that just is that like a short tail sign that our oh, whoa that our house is like contaminated? Where are you going, baby? Get back here. Yeah, you're not allowed to go outside. She loves going outside. You only have shoes on. Let me uh, close that door. There you go. <laughs> Before you escape. I know it's dead, but you gotta stay inside. You can't go out there. Oh, <laughs> you wanna? <laughs> Hallie, Hallie, yeah, no, you can't go out there. I love you. Hallie's not even getting eggs. She's just running around like. Oh, I think I'm you getting any eggs, Hannah? Oh, there's one. They're going pretty quick. Hannah, why don't you look behind you? Look over here. There's sun down on the ground. Oh, maybe not. Oh, Hannah. I found, oh, you gotta look around really quick. Why don't you go out in the grass? Maybe there's some more out in the grass. So many kids here, they all get like, picked up so fast. 